So let's get started with the last chapter of this course. Now what we're going to do right now in this lecture is I'm going to switch around and turn the alarm clock to not actually inherit from the text clock, just to show you how we could switch around inheritance whenever we want to. Beyond that, I'm also going to show you a new HTML5 property which enables us to edit different text areas. And we're going to use that to enable the user to go ahead and type the actual time he wants the alarm clock to start ringing. And that's going to be what we're going to start off doing now. And then in the next lesson, we will continue that actual step. So the first step that I want to do, and we're moving kind of in a realm that is HTML5 exclusive, but a lot of the things that we're learning, you could still implement also on non HTML5 things. What I really want to do is I want to take this clock that's on the top, turn it into an alarm clock, but change it around where it's instead of going to be using the text option, I want it to basically be the same clock that it is, only behind the hood, have an alarm. Now beyond that, I want to be able to click on the element and basically change the time of the alarm instead of hard coding the value in advance. To do that, what I want to do next is I want to go back into my application and step one is I'm going to switch around between the alarm clock and say I want the top item to be the alarm clock. And I'm going to also get rid of those extra parameters. We don't really need them anymore especially now that it's a clock, but also the alarm clock won't need them because we're going to dynamically change those as the user clicks on that area. The next step is I want to make sure that the alarm clock doesn't extend the text clock, but instead it extends the clock itself. So let's do that and go ahead and find the actual alarm clock, which is right here. I want to make sure that we're not calling the text clock anymore, but actually calling the constructor function of the clock. And also when we're creating the clock itself, we want to make sure that we're creating, we're sending into the prototype, the clock and not the text clock. And that was as easy as Pi, as lemon Pi, to basically change our, who does our alarm clock actually inherit from. And now if I go ahead and I click on refresh, one is if I go back into my text here again, because we're seeing the text copy anyways, and that means we have one more place that we need to change. And that was in the format output itself. And we can see that here the output itself that we're generating is based on the logic of the text editor. And what I really want to do is I want to approach that original format output of the actual clock itself instead. So I'm going to go ahead here and just delete everything here and send into the output variable the value that comes back from the clock itself. But I just have to make sure that I call it as an apply function and say, hey, do what you're doing there, but do it as ourselves. And we're going to set inside an array with all those properties. Or we could just type here arguments. And that's all we have to do to make sure that we're going to get that original copy as well, because we're overriding that original output. So we're leveraging that capability of testing something. And then if not, we want to get that original output that we got from the format output that was tracing out to us, that was returning to us. So if I go ahead and I save this, and I click on refresh, we're going to see that now our clock should be uh, working just the way we wanted it to work. Now, before we wrap up this initial lesson, basically initial lesson in this chapter, what I want to do is I want to make sure that this text is editable. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead back into the constructor itself and enhance it a bit further. So I'm going to go into my alarm clock constructor. I'm going to go ahead and create a new DOM object because I want to refer to this a few times. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to approach my HTML5 document dot get element by ID and ask for that specific item from the ID. Beyond that, I also want to go to that specific DOM element and let it know that from here on, it is going to be an editable element calling the content editable and set it to be true. That's all I really had to do to turn my content to be editable. If I go ahead and I click on refresh, we're going to see that now my content is editable. I could literally go inside here and change copy, although it's going to refresh once a second, which is our next problem that we're going to need to solve is that first of all, we want to make sure that we know when we're in and we know when we're out. So we could then let our clock know to not continue counting or not display the counting for a few minutes as we're working. And that's exactly what we're going to look at in the next lesson when we crack into events and ask that text to let us know whenever it's we're zoomed in or focused in and whenever we're focused out. So we'll see you in the next lesson where we do our first event listeners.